Good morning, fellow crafters. My name is Bernadette, and I posted this card onto the Fans of Crafters Companion, and I believe also on the subscription box uh, for Crafters Companion yesterday. And I had a few requests for um, a video to show you how I did it. So please forgive me. I normally don't make a whole lot of videos, so my setup may not be good. My lighting, as a matter of fact, that reminds me, I'm going to turn my light on now. Hopefully that helps. Anyway, um, so I used the base card, the larger one that we got in the last subscription box. And forgive me, my boxes are all mixed up. Um, I don't keep them separate. I try to combine all the cardstock, all the pa pattern paper, etc., and I don't keep them separate. So it's just a hodgepodge of different subscription boxes that we've had thus far. So um, I just used a piece of burgundy cardstock for the mat and layer. And then for this particular card, I used this background paper, but I don't have enough of it to do another card with. So I'm going to use this background paper instead. And I think that'll look nice as well. So let me move all this aside. And I think what most people had a question about was the stamping technique that I used as well as the coloring, etc. So what I'm gonna do right now is I cut a piece of the called Express It blending card, eight and a half by 11. And um, the reason I like this paper is it's specially selected for use with Copic markers. And uh, it's ultra smooth, bright white. And it's uh, it says it's perfect for marker blending. So that's what I like to use it for as well as stamping and card making. So um, that's that. The next part here is the stamps that I'm gonna be using. Um, again, I don't know what set this is from, but I'm gonna be using this stamp, this stamp, this stamp, the smaller one of the same as, as this one, a couple of leaves, and from this set, I believe I used this flower right here. So I'll use that as well. And then the last uh, set here that I'm gonna use is just these two leaf sets right there from this, um, I don't know, again, I don't know what box it was from, but it was in our uh, subscription box. So let's get started. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I am going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink and it's great for Copics so I'm going to use that to do my stamping with and real quick before I get started here I want to put a blank piece of card stock excuse me forgot about this try to have everything prepared anyway this is what I'm going to just use so that my marker does not go seep through on my mat here. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to use this flower right here. I use just a regular acrylic stamping block. But the key to what I'm doing here is I put the ink on the stamp and then I actually make uh, one impression with it. And that way it's kind of a fainter line and it's not as stark and it doesn't look as stamped um, this way. So I'm gonna just stamp this right here along the edge and see how it's kind of grayish. It's not really stark black and that's what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this one again. Do the same. And I'm going to just stamp this right here, just like so. 
Now I'm going to move on to my next flower. And my next flower is this one right here. I'm going to do the same, stamp it. Like that. And I just kind of use a, a random pattern. You don't want to have everything very symmetrical because in nature flowers don't grow that way so it would look very odd there we go on to my next stamp which i am going to use this i'm not sure what kind of flower this is supposed to be but kind of looks like a, a rose maybe and i'm going to just ink that up stamp it off and i'm going to put that right here and what's nice with these acrylic blocks is you can see exactly where you're going to be stamping before you do that oops i forgot i had one to stamp one more and that is going to be kind of over here and i'm going to stamp half of it off you don't have to have the entire stamp on the block or see it on the card when you're when you're making it because it actually makes it look um a little bit more natural in my opinion. So I'm gonna ink this up, stamp it off. Then I'm gonna kinda of do, um, I'm trying to make this card as close to the one that I posted yesterday as possible. And I'm gonna ink it up once more, stamp it off, oops. There we go. And I'm going to stamp this I don't feel like I got that inked up very well. There we go. I'm going to stamp that right here. And two more to go. I love receiving these combination of these flowers like this with our subscription boxes. It makes it a lot of fun to play with because everybody's going to have an oh their own idea of how to mix the stamps up etc okay now this one is going to go right here and then I have one more stamp and that's from this set and this one is just going to get stamped one time Let's see, let's put that maybe just right there on the edge. Okay, so now what we're ready to do is we're ready to do the leaves. And from this stamp set here, I'm going to use these two leaves. And I'm going to ink these up in the same color, stamp it off. And I think I'm going to just position that like that between those two flowers, just like so. And then ink it up again. Insert this maybe right there. And it's up to you wherever you put your flowers, your leaves. I just make sure that I'm doing kind of an L pattern. That's what I like. It's quite a bit, but it's not too much. And then also I leave a space right here for the sentiment. So here we go. I'm going to stamp this one right here. And I'm just going to leave that the way it is right now and then you'll see how I'll finish that at the end now the next thing uh, people had questions about is the coloring now I used mostly spectrum noir markers to color with although I do have um, quite a selection of other stamps excuse me other alcohol markers that I use 
as well as the Crafter Companion because I don't own all of the colors. But I'm going to use these three colors and I'll read them off to you here in a second. I'm going to use FS2, FS3, and FS6. And then I am going to add this Copic Chow, which is RV69. And that's going to be for the darkest part. So I'm going to start off with, I use the chisel, chisel edge to color. And I am just going to go over the entire flower here. I hope that everybody can see, like I said, I'm, I'm just learning to make videos and am using my cell phone to make this video. So I hope it turns out. Then I'm gonna to go to FS6 and I'm just going to go along the lines where I think it should be shaded, which is going to be where two points meet. For example, this is one leaf on top of the other one, or one petal, I mean. And so therefore, where anything bunches together or um, comes to an attachment on the sides, um, I'm going to make that darker. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here with the brush tip of the Copic Chow RV69. I'm gonna just push that color in right there on the sides. And I'm just going to follow the shape of the petals with this marker. There we go. And I think I'm going to, for this part, I'm going to use the FS6. And I am just going to lightly blend that color in, just like so. I have to remember not to over blend because I do want to leave the dark and the light areas. In the flower. To give this depth. And I'm going to color this a little quicker than I normally would because I know people are um, in a hurry and are busy and have lots to do. So you don't want to sit here and watch me coloring forever. But that's the, the basic idea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this up at this point and I'm going to color the rest of these flowers and I'll see you in a minute.
also, um, I decided to pull out two more colors uh, for this card because of the background's a little bit different. So I'm going to use the RV32 and the R85 now as well. Now for these flowers, I am going to use the Spectrum Noir TB1 and TB2. Once again, starting with the chisel edge. And I'm just going to go all over the flower. And I do one at a time because uh, you want your alcohol markers to, 
to um, be put on a surface that is wet with ink and that actually helps the blending and makes blending a lot quicker and easier. And it doesn't show harsh lines either. Whereas if I let one layer dry and come back, it would be harder to blend in. Once again, I'm going over the entire. And if you leave some white spaces, like I'm not making it quite a uniform color right here. There are some pieces that are white that are kind of showing through. And I did that intentionally just to give a really bright highlight. Making the center darker. Kind of just going over the lines that make the petals of the flower. Pulling some of the color out a little bit in the larger petals and then going over that. See that harsh line there? Oops, my nail polish is chipping. Um, see that harsh line there? That's what we do not want. We're going to go ahead and use that lighter color to blend it in. Just getting rid of that harsh line. We want it to be kind of blurry and blend in gradually, not from really light to dark. Oops. I just made an error and I grabbed TB2 instead of TB1, so that's okay. I'm gonna just grab TB3 and have that be the shade color. There we go, that works. I love my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. I There isn't a day that goes by that I don't use them in my card making or whatever craft I'm working on. Now what I'm gonna do is take TB1 and just kind of soften the lines. That one's gonna stick out just a little bit more, but that's okay. Um, TB1 again, go over this one. And then I'm going to use TB2 once again. Okay, we're done coloring those. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to color these two. And for that, I use the CT1 CR10 and OR1. And I'm going to start with the chisel edge. Just quickly give this a, a base coat of the yellow. Then go to the darkest orange, and I'm going to put this in the center right there, as well as adding a couple of darker lines in here for shading. Now I'm gonna take the OR1 and just go over, soften those lines. Okay. 
And then finally, I'm going to go back to the CT1 and just go over the whole thing to blend everything in together and just to kind of tone the color down a little bit from that orange that was so vibrant. And then I'm just going to repeat this pattern of coloring really quick right here. And this time I'm going to skip that really bright orange because this one's barely peeking out. I don't know. I just wanted it to be a little softer. There. I'm going to call that good. Now for the greens. Um, the greens, the colors that I used were CG1, CG2, and DG3. And it's basically the same idea. The only difference is with the leaves, I'm going to start out with the bullet tip. And uh, they're so small that I can go ahead and do all of them at once. And then I'm just gonna kind of go down the, the center of that leaf. following the lines. I'm not gonna even put the cap back on that. Then I'm gonna to go to DG3 and make just a little dot where it would be the darkest. Same thing there. Come back up with CG2. Blend that out a bit. Try to leave that bright tip on the leaf just to give it some contrast and then do the same I'm just adding a little bit more stem so it doesn't look like that leaf is just floating there. Back to my CG1. I'm trying to look every once in a while to make sure that I'm staying in the frame. I sure hope I am. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm I'm not very proficient yet at making videos. Although I do like to make videos. And for those of you who um, said that I should be on the design team, I did apply. So. I'm crossing my fingers that I am accepted and I would love, love, love to be on the design team for Crafters Companion. I thoroughly enjoy using their products and gives me much joy. So now the next step is I have had this, um, ink pad for, gosh, I can't even tell you, probably close to 17 years, so I don't know if they're even making it anymore, but I'm using it. It's Memories Soft Leaf. That's the color that I'm going to be using here. And I'm going to use the small leaves. Nope, nope, those are not the right ones. Not the right ones. Where are they? Here they are. It's from this set. And the reason is the leaves that I just picked up before uh, need to be colored in and these are already solid. So they do not need to be colored. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, ink it up on my green ink pad 
and then I'm just going to go in and place these sprigs randomly like so and it's nice because it gives it a background and it makes it more dimensional more cohesive that way it doesn't look like these flowers are just kind of drifting out in the open without being attached to anything And with this, it's really great because it doesn't matter if you go over the flowers that are already there, you can't really see it anyway. So I was pleasantly surprised when I tried this yesterday and it worked so well. So that's that one. Just going to dab that color off. Then I'm going to use this other shape. This is basically the same leaf, just a different shape. And I am just going to place that let's see let's put that one there and they're great 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 oops they're great 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 for fillers we go I think one one or two more we're close to being done okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the CG or the DG3 and I'm gonna go with the bullet tip and I'm just going to draw like a little smiley face the bottom of a smiley face there and just draw one of the the stems Kind of go over that one, do the same here. There we go. Now I'm going to go over that with CG1. Just to lighten it and to kind of blend it in there. Now what I'm going to do is with my Copics, I'm gonna take the neutral gray, which is N0, and my Studio 71 alcohol marker, and this is N2 neutral gray. And I don't know if you can see it um, in my picture that I posted yesterday or here on camera, but I just barely went over these edges with gray just to make everything kind of pop. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna start out with the end zero. And I'm just gonna go around the edge of the flowers here. Now I'm going to switch to the N2. Because this is in the corner and most of the lighter areas would be up here. So that's why I'm going with the darker marker in these areas. Just makes everything kind of look like it belongs and 
not a scattered project of a flower here and there that really looks out of place. kind of color these areas in. Now this marker is kind of on the dry side. Um, I refilled it the other day, but I'm not quite sure why it's still dry. Maybe I need to put some more ink in it. Not sure. Have to play around with it. Oops, I just realized I did. I forgot to color the inside of this flower and the inside of that flower. So I'm just going to quickly make that orange. Same with that. Let's see. I don't like the way this flower right here. Do you see how nicely and blended this one is and this one? But I do not like the way that flower looks right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Take the FS6 and just kind of start here on the edge and just kind of blend that in just a little bit more. Being careful not to overwork it because then you're going to take all the shading out and we don't want that. There we go. That seems like a happy medium. Alrighty then. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just stamp hello on this card. And I'm going to use the Tuxedo Black. Now this one I'm not going to stamp off. I want the whole thing to show pretty, pretty well. Let's see, where do I want it? There we go. Hello. I'm going to give that a few seconds to dry. And then I'm going to go over it. Just kind of a light shadow on the right sides, just to give that some dimension. And I see this, I did not connect that. There we go. Okay, I think we are all set. Now it's time to put the card together. And I can take this out of the way. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to keep this on burgundy paper cardstock. I'm just doing this to show you how I did my card yesterday. But I barely put any of the glue down because, like I said, I'm not sure I'm going to keep this this mat. I'm not sure I'm going to keep this color. So I'm going to set that down. Then we're going to put the mat behind it. base and then Oops, 
I just totally did that backwards. This goes like this. Thank goodness I didn't use too much of that glue. That would have not been for good. there you go there's the finished card and if you have any questions um or you know thoughts or any ideas please feel free to share them with me and um like i said <laughs> i'm not a professional i don't pretend to be one i just made this video because i was asked to so um have a good day and happy crafting bye